Hello and welcome to Copenhagen. My name is Jane Cunningham and I'm delighted to be in the stunning surroundings of Villa Copenhagen. This hotel embraces the past, the present and the future. This is conscious luxury. This is all about enjoying life and experiences while acting responsibly. And this hotel has put the, the UN SDGs at the heart of their strategy. And they have quite a bold goal to be the best hotel for the world because they're looking after their environmental footprint in this location. So a great place to be and a fitting environment to have this conversation today. I have Kit Litikoff, who is the director of Wonderful Copenhagen and delighted to have Lars Ramme, who is the head of tourism and experience um, economy and welfare at the Danish Chamber of Commerce. On the 6th of May, IMEX will host a virtual advocacy session called Citizen-Centred Destinations and the Future of Business Events. The conversation that Kit, Lars and I are having today will cover a number of areas that will form part of the content. So today, firstly, Lars is going to be talking about policy-making priorities in Copenhagen and Denmark as a whole and the implications for business events and the citizens. Kit's also going to share some innovative and forward-thinking initiatives around getting Copenhagen moving again. And lastly, we want to leave you with some practical advice on how you should be working together with the government to make sure that business events is aligning with the future strategies of the destination. So thank you very much, both of you, for joining me. And just to set the scene, Lars, it'd be great if you could introduce yourself, tell us a little bit about your background and your role. Thank you, and thank you for the invitation. Uh, yeah, 13 months after the pandemic struck Copenhagen, Denmark, what is my role, what is my task? I'm a director for this area, covering uh, 8,000 companies in Denmark, working in the whole value chain of tourism, including conference centers, hotels, uh, PGOs, etc. And um, 13 months later, it's been one long conversation uh, on the phone with members, companies who have to cope with this, have to navigate in this, mm -hmm. and trying to bridge um, the reality from the companies, from the sector, mm -hmm. to the polit political level. Mm -hmm. um, when we do, when the government make uh, compensation schemes, when we reopen or close down, lots of questions are raised, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, what can be done in order to prevent infection to get a grab again in society, but also what can be done in order not to uh, uh, destroy this whole sector that is so important mm -hmm. to Copenhagen. Mm -hmm. So I would say there was a before and an after uh, early March in my career at the Danish Chamber of Commerce. It's a organ business organization organizing, of course, the, the employer side of the tourism sector. Counterpart would be the trade unions. But we see actually ourselves as a important role in making society better uh, with the uh, part of the part of the private initiative in the private companies. Great. Quite a whirlwind for you in the last 13 Definitely. months. I look forward to hearing a little bit more about that shortly. Kit, can you just introduce yourself and share a little bit of what's, what um, the a background of wonderful Copenhagen and the setup here in Denmark? Sure. I am uh, the director of the Copenhagen Convention Bureau and uh, the bureau is sitting within wonderful Copenhagen as a DMO. Um, the DMO is the official tourist organization for, for Copenhagen. It's a foundation, so our funding uh, comes from many different sources like uh, private funding, uh, governmental funding, municipality funding, sometimes even foundations. So um, it's a patchwork um, that frames it. Great, thank you for sharing. Now, Lars, we know your day started extremely early uh, this morning, but maybe just for people that are watching, can you give us a life, a life in the day of R Lars and the, and the role that you have? Mm. I would say in general, all companies, also companies uh, having the business in you are in our industry here, the meetings and event industry. Uh, they like to be able to plan. Mm -hmm. Lead time is extremely long for all the, uh, the larger congresses coming in. But in general, lead time is uh, long. Mm -hmm. um, to be able to forecast is important. And what happened with the pandemic, all of a sudden you could not forecast at all. Mm -hmm. uh, that's of course a problem. And when you at the same time get like a 
massive headache economically because you had to cancel everything. You still had your employees, you still had all your costs. How can, could we as a society, as a business organization, as the Danish Chamber of Commerce, help securing that there will also be a life after the mm -hmm. pandemic? Um, and that's not an easy task. Mm -hmm. I believe actually the, the Danish society, a cooperative society where we actually join forces, government, opposition, uh, employer side and trade union uh, uh, side, to try to find solutions, and that is very often difficult. Of course, the voices are many. Yeah. Of course, this is a basis of conflict. Mm -hmm. Who gets what, when, and how? Mm -hmm. That would be like a, a headline also in this, in this instance. And then, being in my role, apart from trying to bridge mm -hmm. knowledge from one side to the other, from the public side to the private side, of course, I'm also a kind of politician myself, as mm -hmm. my voice is heard, mm -hmm. I can get access to media. In our organization we have very good economists and analysts and uh, people with very strong statistical uh, um, knowledge. Therefore we produce uh, policy recommendations ourselves. We argue uh, argument in order to get well, the way forward that we believe would be the best. And uh, yes, this morning, start up early six o'clock this morning, Danish national television, because just as today, the plan for reopening the borders, extremely important also to our sector here, yeah. was announced. And as in any uh, plan, you, the devil is in the detail, that mm -hmm. was also the case here. Mm -hmm. So I actually just, well, more or less heard myself say the same thing in a new version, as I've been saying many, many times. Thank you for the initiative, thank you for the will and confidence from the politicians. Mm -hmm. But, and then, of course, the last part that we would like also to be taken care of here. Exactly, and it's the but we're wanting to get moving again. So Kit, you know, what's driving you at the moment? Well, that's a good question actually, <laughs> but the light at the end of the tunnel is, is one of the things that drives me right now. Mm -hmm. I'm one of Lars's members and I'm also trying to navigate the situation on a day-to-day -day basis because as you said, uh, planning has been Im impossible throughout the last year. Um, on the internal lines, it's also about you know keeping the motivation up mm -hmm. uh, with the team, mm -hmm. because it's been a lot of bad news uh, coming at us uh, for a long time now. So what we are trying to do is stay visible and to get ready for the reopening that will be coming soon. And it's... Uh, as you mentioned last, close contact with uh, clients, with partners, with peers, not only to know how are you, but also to know what are your needs now and what will they be? Uh, because on that basis, we can look into a new business model mm -hmm. that we will need uh, on the other side of this and have started to look at how could that look like. And we need to, um, we need to engage with uh, our stakeholders to be able to do that in, in a uh, wise way. Um, yeah, so building the right business model, I think that's key right yeah. now. Uh, and that is driving me because yeah. that's uh, all about, you know, how do we reskill, how do we uh, be become ready uh, for, for what's coming at us. And on that note, also, we have a global industry that we need mm -hmm. to get up and running. It's not done mm -hmm. with Copenhagen. We need to have planes in the air. Mm -hmm. um, we need to be able to receive uh, global visitors at our destination. So lots of moving targets here. Yes, absolutely. And it's exciting because we know there's so much opportunity. So that does the light at the end of the tunnel shines, shines bright. So Lars, when we're moving on to talk a little bit about policy making priorities, can you share how Copenhagen has used the pandemic to reevaluate and even redesign policy making priorities? Well, first of all, um, we have, I must say, faced some challenges that could infect us also in the years ahead. Mm -hmm. Because all of a sudden, the city was empty. All of a sudden, all the, the complaints about buses with guests, about mm -hmm. overcrowding, about there's no more room for the Copenhageners in Copenhagen. We did also hear this mm -hmm. voice strongly, as they do in Barcelona, I believe, in Amsterdam, in other great mm -hmm. uh, cities. So on the one hand, we actually had to face this argumentation. Wow, this is so nice. 
uh, at the same time where people were losing their jobs, mm -hmm. businesses were going bankrupt, mm -hmm. uh, massive losses uh, were seen in the, in the books. Uh, this hotel, as in any other hotel, mm -hmm. at the airport, airlines, PCOs, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera. So that was actually a challenge because uh, uh, that was strong. Mm -hmm. So to balance this on the other hand, this argumentation, I believe, that you've been, been a strong voice for, for a long, long time, all the massive benefits from business events in a city. Not only jobs and money, et cetera, et cetera, but also this whole network thing that is uh, um, uh, boosting the strengths in the businesses of this city, uh, whether that be green energy, or medical life science companies, et cetera. So we really had to balance this. But I'll give you an example. Um, Maybe it's not at the core of a business event, mm -hmm. but participants, they do also enjoy a great dinner and they enjoy a nightcap afterwards, etc. There's been a strong discussion in this city whether we should use the opportunity to close down the nightlife to a large extent as before. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was very strong. Fortunately, well, via political lobbyism, good forces we joined mm -hmm. together, wonderful Copenhagen, politicians who actually well, where the hate that might be a bad solution, we we did well. At least we paused the the suggestion, but it was at top level at the city hall of uh, of, uh, of Copenhagen. So the whole, I think, um, job for Kit and for mm -hmm. us and for the companies mm -hmm. is to more than ever been able to document all the benefits from business events because. Uh, it's not only people who think we are made in heaven. Actually, mm -hmm. some think that we are part of a story made in hell. My goodness. Now, when we were talking earlier, you talked a little bit around learnings from the financial crisis and actually the, the position that Copenhagen potentially has coming out of this. Can you share your thoughts mm. on that? Um, when I recall those tough years after the financial crisis, 08, 09, 010, mm -hmm. uh, it was a similar situation. Um, uh, we had a, uh, all of a sudden a, a, a stone in the face was thrown towards the mice tourism industry. Uh, we had no lockdown, fortunately, but still, it was these were tough times. Mm -hmm. If I recall correctly, now I'm not in, in in your sector, but what happened was that when corporate, especially corporate companies, should decide where to put the next event, they more uh, uh, they emphasized more than before. This has to, be, um, has to be a strong professional uh, um, content here. It has not to be fun. It has to be with a cost-benefit analysis made, uh, meaning, with those, I'm sorry to say, kid, cities like Copenhagen and maybe many northern European cities where mm -hmm. the sun does not shine so much in March and November, mm -hmm. all of a sudden we got an, an advantage here because uh, many meeting planners, they actually thought away from the more exotic mm -hmm. destinations mm -hmm. for their business events and towards uh, classical Northern European, Northern American uh, convention destinations mm -hmm. for their, mm -hmm. for their um, mm -hmm. events. And now I actually see something that might be of a parallel because uh, even though I love the city, it's magnificent, come join us, visit us. Uh, among the reasons why we are doing so well and why Kit, when we see these hit list of which uh, cities are performing the best. Mm -hmm. Among those reasons are some boring, boring, boring reasons. And those being accessibility, those being logistics, those being IT, those being safety, mm -hmm. those being hygiene. Mm -hmm. And what's happening now, those boring things, they are in demand. Mm -hmm. And if you add on how those who actually within an epidemic have been good at getting society through with not too many casualties, if I could use that word. Yeah. And then Denmark is one of the best countries mm -hmm. here. Uh, mm -hmm. It's been tough also here, mm -hmm. but compared to well, almost all the other countries in Europe, I'm not saying Brazil or the US or mm -hmm. what have you, we've been doing very well. Mm -hmm. Therefore, and that's towards the politicians in our organization to invest here. Yeah. Is actually we have a possibility now yeah. because being, uh, 
in this uh, cold Scandinavian way of doing business, being very good at both boring, boring things, IT, logistics, etc. Mm -hmm. Now we get a huge advantage. Mm -hmm. And I believe we've already seen a few of them already. Mm -hmm. uh, already in, uh, also in the sports event side, and I would add to this if it's okay. Already uh, when the pandemic, the second wave was strongest here in December, mm -hmm. Denmark to go was the only country the, to host the European Championship in handball. Uh, of course, there are no spectators, etc., but it went fine. Mm -hmm. And now we look forward to build kids just in two months' time. European Cup in mm -hmm. football, European Championship in football uh, was cancelled last year. It's now taking place and it is announced now. It will take place and it will be with uh, thousands of spectators at the national stadium. That's fantastic. That's success stories we want to hear. But this is really interesting to hear your thoughts. Um, and Kit, I'd just like to hear how you feel that maybe events <clears throat> can become a more integral part of the strategic econ economy and society-wide objectives that are here. And we'll maybe hear a little bit more from Lars around them. But what are your thoughts? Uh, well, my thoughts are that they already are mm. actually and, and that we should make um, a thing out of uh, making that more visible uh, because it's already happening uh, the knowledge creation that stems from business events uh, cannot be underestimated but we need to, sh to show and tell more but we also need to expand and create new solutions like legacy programs and I completely agree on the meaning and purpose that is coming back now uh, as a, a main reason to go. We need to be able to support that uh, as a CVB and, and to help um, our uh, meetings and congresses get in contact with the right people so that we can build up like a broader portfolio and uh, make visible the added value of, of business events. It's always been a thing, but uh, we need to really expose that value to make sure that we are known. I mean. We are in an in fight for attention with a lot of other industries right now, mm -hmm. and for good reasons. Uh, other industries suffer as well, um, but that means that we need to be really sharp on uh, our messaging. Or our messaging here. Mm -hmm. It could also be things like matchmaking between the interest of the event and the interest of the destination. How do we make sure that that happens mm -hmm. so that we can maximize value, mm -hmm. and then. Um, I would say sustainability. We need to also make visible that we are really good at it at this destination uh, on all the bottom lines of sustainability. And I believe that that confidence that we need in the future also comes from taking responsibility um, to help shape that future. And I mean that for the meetings industry as well. We need to get in there and, and be part of that um, a part of that work and we can't leave it up to others to solve that equation because we have a responsibility as well mm -hmm. to uh, to get in there mm -hmm. so we must must do our best to contribute mm -hmm. on, on that yeah and Lars what what else do you think needs to be done at a government level to really unlock the full potential of business events I mean there is the the reopening questions that you're in the thick of but maybe into the future the unlocking more opportunities to bring conferences that really matter to society mm. here. What do you think needs to be done? Actually, I'll take this question 180 degrees around mm -hmm. and say, politicians actually, they don't care about you. Mm. They don't care about the business tree. They care about voters. Mm -hmm. And voters and the fear of the voters have mm -hmm. been, at least in this country, uh, imminent in this crisis. Mm -hmm. And that brings me back to, well, uh, to our industry here, mm -hmm. that we, we just face this as a point of departure. Mm -hmm. And if we can bring benefit to the voters, to the people on the street here, mm -hmm. then we will get the uh, ears open uh, mm -hmm. from the politician side. Mm -hmm. And definitely I agree, a kit, a strong structural push in, in a sustainable direction, uh, mm -hmm. a climate direction, etc. That is, of course, very, very important. But I think what has happened uh, both here and Elsewhere, and one of the reasons why the Prime Minister in this country is extremely popular as mm -hmm. actually leaders in, in those countries performing well in the crisis. Because uh, at times of crisis, you need a strong leader. Mm -hmm. And uh, when the strong leader also has this uh, carpet behind her of, wow, we have a pandemic, it brings fear into people, mm -hmm. then her navigation is relatively easy. Mm -hmm. So we have to help the politicians to remove fear.
-hmm. We have to be able to say these are the solutions. We have to be uh, those uh, I think economically uh, uh, arguments that we mm -hmm. I don't know that some people might have put most forward for many years. I think they have to be supplemented by a whole range of other uh, other arguments. Mm -hmm. Whether that will be a post COVID nineteen overcrowd people man crowd management perspective, whether that will be mm -hmm. an even stronger focus than before on sustainability, uh, green tech, uh, those uh, strength positions that well, we have in Copenhagen and they got some others in Hamburg or Munich or, or Paris, uh, what have you. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I think that this, uh, at least for the middle term, the next two, three, four years, uh, the effect we have not seen structural changes yet. Mm -hmm. And therefore we have to be extremely careful to uh, look them through the eyes and not be naive on just moving forward as if they loved us as they used to. They mm -hmm. don't necessarily do. Kit, what's your comments? No, no, I, I agree. And, and we do need some positive yeah. rhetorics now. Mm -hmm. um, it's been very focused on what was not possible and on the restrictions and what you can't do. Mm -hmm. And there's been an entire industry, you know, yelling and screaming for what can we do? Mm -hmm. Can you please help us, you know, at least lay a plan out or yeah. uh, give us some perspective as to when and where this will um, ease up? Yeah. yeah I think there's a general political logic. It is far easier to argue against something than for something. It's far easier to kill an idea than to get back up to an idea. And if you want change, if you want development here, mm -hmm. then we really have to prepare. And of course, also like uh, good arguments, uh, good data, uh, a good business plan, etc. Mm -hmm. of course, of major importance. Mm -hmm. But I think there will be some kind of a, a conservative uh, um, resistance against too much change now because uh, wow if this can happen this pandemic what will be the next mm -hmm. and then still to remember that's one of the challenges I think we share uh, everybody owning real estate in Northern Europe mm -hmm. everybody owning a stock everybody having a pension saving yeah. whoa prices just mm -hmm. uh, skyrocket in this city as in other cities uh, uh, my wife works in the IT sector she's just got a bonus um, Mm -hmm. Public sector, they have just well, we can work from home, that's nice. Mm -hmm. um, I think among those 40,000 plus mm -hmm. employees been fired in our sector, mm -hmm. more than half of them are still are now back uh, taking jobs uh, in elsewhere in the economy. Mm -hmm. Meaning, seen from a macro perspective, this headache is not as big as we think it is. So they don't care unless we are very good at arguing. Because otherwise you will see arguments like, the economy changes, these are the, oh, that's the market economy, um, uh, face it, uh, change, uh, change the strategy, do something else, uh, we will not get back to normal. We will not get back to normal, but we have to work hard on getting the benefits of business travel, of meeting and events industry mm -hmm. back on the table, because these are far more than just jobs and economy. These are also like a major, plays a major role in the uh, well, network economy in, in an innovative economy as uh, well, uh, the Danish economy, for example. Absolutely. And are there any other tools that you need to be able to do that? Uh, um, good question. Um, maybe I should just repeat myself. Um, what always is good is that uh, you have your data on the table yeah. that you have prepared. That's one thing. Mm -hmm. Another thing is being able to communicate these. Mm -hmm. Uh, otherwise, it's just black letters and a white piece mm -hmm. of paper. So these communication strategies, uh, we have to put emotions into this. Mm -hmm. What happened now, I talked about uh, the resistance against having life in the city. What, do, uh, what have you in a city like Copenhagen? Yeah. Resistance against having life in the city yeah. is strong for elderly, rich people living in the city center. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they argue and argue out from emotions. Uh, we cannot sleep in the night and uh, trash mm -hmm. on, the, on, the, on the sideways, etc. Uh, and they use emotions and we have to do the same. Mm -hmm. And then we have to all get real living faces, yeah. uh, real destinies, uh, yeah. real good stories, real anecdotes that well, you will listen to, etc. Yeah. Otherwise it will just be blah, blah, and nobody will listen. Mm -hmm. 
So more stories to the citizens. And actually, Kit, when we were talking about, you know, business events as contributing towards citizen well-being and, you know, an economic ad advantage, can you share your thoughts there? Um, I, I think, yes, I, they do contribute, both directly and indirectly, as Lars mentioned. I mean, uh, business events are known for their contribution to to business and job creation and all those room night numbers that we all know um, at at the destinations, but less known for the knowledge and the network creation and um, that is behind almost all scientific research that we know of. Uh, that could be life-saving medical procedures, it could be technology or something else, yeah. but, but the business events are almost always at the back of this, mm -hmm. and where the network that actually make that happen um, is created. So that's the good story that we need to, to get out there. Mm -hmm because it's also beneficial for each and every destination that that is happening at that destination, that they actually get, uh, you know, leading um, scientists to come and to be part of uh, whatever goes on um, on the destination. So, um, I mean, if events can create even talent attraction of international talent, we can get them to come here and stay and yeah. work at this destination that is overlooked. So we need to get those stories out there, most definitely. And we need to build cases mm -hmm. um, on this. And it was share. wonderful, the PhD study that wonderful Copenhagen did a couple of years ago, and they're talking about academic events, and that the majority of researchers that moved to Copenhagen was as a result of us coming to Copenhagen for a conference, which is just valu so valuable to be able to share these stories. But yeah. you were about to say something, Lars. Yeah, it's got a, actually a funny parallel maybe in how to change the wording of your the value proposition or the, uh, this, the, the, uh, the narrative of your uh, business. Uh, the city hosts the, the world largest shipping line, mask line, mm -hmm. uh, having like thousands of big tankers sailing around in Suez, uh, Panama, wherever. Mm -hmm. And they just change the strategy and say, we are not a shipping line anymore. We are an IT company. Because IT is so important in order to transport X to Y, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. They've been investing heavily here. Mm -hmm. So also when they will need for talent traction, et cetera, from being like uh, an uh, old business to be a new business, and they succeeded here. And because I think IT will be so important in order to make frictionless traveling possible, in order to have uh, uh, health, uh, um, uh, in order to have hygienic and health mm -hmm. safe uh, events, there we can use IT. And if we just will also flow on this uh, this business sector here, I think there will be potential to well, not all the time, not always, but in some instant to rephrase actually what we're doing. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Also to keep up the face-to-face -face meeting, that mm -hmm. is so important. We just met via Teams uh, two weeks ago, and now we meet for real, and yeah. that's so good because yeah. that changes it all. Absolutely. No, I totally agree, totally agree. Um, I would now like to move on a little bit to talk about some, some new initiatives or some initiatives that are cooking in Copenhagen. Kit, perhaps you can share? Sure. Um, I mean, your question is basically around, you know, how do you get uh, the policy level to support what you would like to do moving forward? And in, in Copenhagen, we've been working with the Ministry of Business and with the municipality of Copenhagen on a comeback plan mm -hmm. called Comeback Copenhagen. And on the CVP side, it, it uh, has quite a few new initiatives in it that we are working on right now to be able to be ready. And um, some of them, are, of course, like you mentioned, health and safety and being ready digitally uh, as a destination, those will be hygiene factors. And I think we are not the only destination looking into that. But of course, it's important to do that right. But also, we, we have a four-year funding now for the Copenhagen Legacy Lab, the Legacy Initiative. And, um, and I'm really happy about that because that means that it's no longer only like something that we can experiment with, but also something that, that we can actually go offer uh, for the associations. Mm -hmm. 
So that's important. We have kind of an explorative project on, uh, on incubating novel events. Mm -hmm. um, I don't have any good answers to it yet, but, mm -hmm. but we are looking into that. And, uh, and obviously build um, the new business plan. Mm -hmm. And that builds on research. I mean, we speak with clients and with partners and mm -hmm. with uh, clusters and with everybody that, that we can speak to. And of course, also sustainability. So we have um, actually, as part of the plan, we have just launched a digital guide for more sustainable mm -hmm. uh, congresses and events. And it's not the usual tick off, uh, do this, do that. It's a, like a more holistic approach to actually enable uh, all participants, suppliers, delegates, exhibitors, etc., to be part of a sustainable journey mm -hmm. before, during and after uh, an event. So we find that really important. Wonderful. And you launched the Copenhagen Legacy Lab in 2019, which is a wonderful right. toolkit to be able to work with locals, work with international associations to have a combined mission around meeting legacy so that when everybody leaves, that there is this long lasting economic and societal change as a result. And then we'll be sharing more information. Sure, and that speaks into the meaning and purpose that we touched upon earlier, right? So mm -hmm. actually aligning that between destination and, and uh, an association and Congress. Yeah, that's wonderful. Now we're uh, marching on towards the end of our session today. So I think it'd be really nice to finish a little bit on some practical, practical advice. We know that there's going to be destinations from all around the globe that will be watching. So Lars, perhaps you can share three takeaways or something that could be some good advice for people, people listening to this session today. Hmm. Um. Looking into the future, sometimes it's important and clever to look back to what's been working well before. Mm -hmm. And when before would be like in the early stages of this crisis, what's been working very well here is that we already in April started preparing how could we open up football stadiums, mm -hmm. how could we open up conference centers. Mm -hmm. We made protocols uh, already in March, mm -hmm. April, meaning that we could do testing in May, meaning already from June we could have events of mm -hmm up to 12, 15,000 people in this country. Mm -hmm. Of course, it will be closed down again, but because we had this success, and I know that the football organization who was leading this role together with wonderful Copenhagen and, 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 and with us, well they, were, well, they couldn't be visited by so many due to travel restrictions, but they will be in best case in many ways, how to produce protocols, how to conduct in this instance, football games of this scale. Mm -hmm. And from that, we learned also in the business event sector. That made us say, wow, if we could do so, and we already know that was when the, we could see the second wave in the horizon, we said, now let's try and work on this COVID-19 passport in order to make sure we will have the EuroCup football, the large rock and roll festivals, and also the large uh, uh, events at the conference centers, etc. And actually, it would be plug and play already back in December, and then the politicians came. And then after long debate, and la la la, we could announce this on February 8th, and now we are close to having a digital COVID-19 mm -hmm. passport. There will be on an EU level of, on, we expect uh, at June 26th, that will make seamless traveling possible with this COVID-19 passport. But from an old man and old advice, prepare, prepare, think forward, mm -hmm. and just don't think you have to invent everything from new, actually learn from what you did before. Mm -hmm. And I do think that, um, Mm -hmm. The world will change, we will face major challenges, but uh, if you don't start prepare now, then it'll be too late. Yeah, thank you. Kit? Yeah, I agree. I mean, but I, and I also agree on, you know, don't panic. Take, take your time, because we do have time to collect the right knowledge and, and build on the, the things that, that we already know. We have the numbers, we have the statistics, we mm -hmm. know our clients. So get the picture together before you start, you know, running, because we, we need to, this to be knowledge-based and to be reality-based, uh, first and foremost. And then, I mean, always important to align with commercial partners, with clients, with your knowledge clusters, mm -hmm. your local stakeholders, mm -hmm. and also important mm -hmm. with the policymakers, of course. 
Thank you very much. It's been a really interesting conversation. Thank you so much for watching us today. Lots of, lots of advice. Prepare, document, don't panic, don't rush. Very much work together, all about collaboration in the community. Thank you for your time today. Thank you, Jane. Thank you.